I hear a lot of folks talk about we should share information more freely, but it's the person who always is saying that is the person who's not involved in the breach at the time, right? I know there's a lot of conversation about how to make that easier and better for those victims earlier in the process so that more of us can learn and understand how to protect ourselves from the attack that's going on right now. Is there a reference to that in this document or just yeah, tell yeah, me about some of the work you're doing? Yeah. No, it's definitely a part of the issue. And I think as you bring it up, the incident is a classic example, right? So you have a victim who's suffering from a cyber incident. And the last thing, and I think it's a natural understanding, is that the sort of last thing would be we want to air our dirty laundry out there right. and let people know what happened. And then certainly also worried about class action lawsuits, right? Going after, again, this victim organization who was a uh, victim of a cyber crime is now also being sued by their customers or other constituents because of maybe not implementing best security practices. It's that vicious cycle. But the thing that I would say and argue is that the ISACs offer a safe and secure way to share that information in a trusted environment, confidentially and even anonymously. And the best part of that also is that if you're suffering from an incident, malware, ransomware event, something like that, there may be somebody else in your community has, who has gone through something very similar and you might be able to learn from them. You might be able to, to restore faster, learn how they were able to mitigate the circumstances and get back up and running quicker. Ultimately, it just it comes down to putting that information out there and helping the rest of the community better secure themselves.